Former Congresswoman Corrine Brown is now a convicted felon. On Thursday, she was found guilty on 18 of 22 charges. She faces up to 277 years in prison on various charges, including 20 years for conspiracy, 100 years for mail fraud, 140 for wire fraud, five years for concealing material facts, three years for obstruction of IRS laws, and nine years for tax fraud. So now I want to sit and talk to Gene Nichols. You've been joining us through this process for the last few weeks. Gene, I want to start with talking about the sentencing. Those numbers, we got to assume, are not going to be the reality of what she is sentenced to. No, and I don't, Scott, I don't think anybody expects those to be the reality. What's going to happen is, is once we get through a motion for new trial, if that's denied, Judge Corrigan will have the opportunity not only to have had probation do an evaluation and give him a report, but to hear from witnesses, not only from the, from the government, but also from Congresswoman Brown. He's going to have to take into account what he's planning on doing with the co-defendants, what has happened with other defendants in similar situations, which of course will be the negative for Congresswoman Brown. The positive is what she has done in her life, the fact that she has no record. Does that play a role? Because we're going to be hearing from his character witnesses probably a lot more, the talks of Jesse Jackson, Martin Luther King III, if people of that magnitude come into a sentencing hearing, does that really play a role, or do they just look at the crime she's convicted of? I think it, it's absolutely going to play a role. I do not expect the judge to allow witness after witness after witness to keep coming in, keep coming in, because to a certain extent, the judge knows what she has accomplished for this community. It's well known what she's accomplished, the positives that she has for the community. Those will have to be weighed against the negatives of what she's been convicted of, the severity of the crimes, the victims of the crimes, the amount of money that we're talking about that she's been accused of and now convicted of taking away. So all of that will have to be weighed for Judge Corrigan to come out with a decision that he believes is just and proper. We talked to a juror who told us that the juror who was dismissed had said that they had spoken to a higher power who said Corrine Brown was not guilty. The judge would have gotten involved there can that play a role in the appeal process? There's not a doubt that that will be an issue in appeal. I'm not that Why? Sorry. Because that juror <laughs> was not in the final decision. So the reason is whether or not the jury should have been removed in the first place. And you can fully expect the defense to argue that that juror should not have been removed, that they were a rightful juror, that they were put on the jury. What you can also fully expect is when we get to see the conversation, what Judge Corrigan said, what was done, that he will have laid forth the exact reasons why the juror had to be removed. I'm sure it will be grounded in case law because case law would tell us that if that juror cannot be fair and impartial or is making decisions not based upon what's going on in that room but only based upon a higher power, then they're no longer able to sit as a juror. And so I expect Judge Corrigan's, what he has put down on paper, to be pretty solid as to why he had to remove that juror because every lawyer knows that that will be an issue that will be addressed on appeal. So she won't even really get to sentencing maybe till fall, late summer, and then there's the lengthy sentencing process after that. We won't see her in a jail cell if she ever is in a jail cell for a long time. Is that normal or is she getting preferential treatment? No, I think it's normal, especially in federal court. We're so used to state court and we're so used to a different way that things are done. We don't see trials too often in federal court and we don't see the system work out in federal court this way. I don't think she's getting preferential treatment. I think she's getting the treatment that the federal court allows and probably what is deserved in this sort of case. She's not a threat to the community. There's no chance of her fleeing the jurisdiction. So I would expect that once she is sentenced, she will receive what is called an appellate bond, similar to what she's out on right now. And the judge will allow her to stay out pending an appeal. When the appeal comes back, and if she has lost and there no, there's no other recourse, then if she does get sentenced to prison, that's when she would end up having to go. Gene Nichols, thank you for all your input this week. It's been very helpful. And we have a special section on our website, newsjacks.com, dedicated to the Corrine Brown corruption trial. Look at a list of all the charges she has been convicted of and watch an interview she did with us. That's newsforjacks.com slash trial.